In this video, I'll be introducing comma categories and explaining the simpler, more specific slice categories. So first of all, what is a comma category? Well, it's going to be intuitively discussing the transformations between functors that aren't from the same categories to the same categories. So natural transformations, we have uh, two functors f and g, which are both from C to D. With comma categories, it will discuss the transformations where the diagram has a category A and a category B, both going into a category C. Instead of having the same domain, we split the domains and then compare in the output. So we have F and G. What do I mean by this compare? Well, let's say we have an object A of A and an object B of B. Then the way comma categories are talked about is that we compare F of A and G of B. What is their relation? Well, in category theory, the only way to talk about their relation is through arrows. And so let's just have an arrow between them. So this is what we analyze in comma categories. The transformations or morphisms between the two functors outputs. So this allows us to compare the functors in a way. How do I write this out in a more concise manner? Well, I could just write it out as A, an object of A, F, an arrow, and B, an object of B. And so this triple will represent what we're analyzing in a comma category. And what I mean by what we're analyzing in a comma category is that these are the objects. So these are the objects that we are analyzing. Now, if we have objects, we should probably have arrows. So what would an arrow be? Well, it would be something that takes you between two triples. So let's say we have A, F, B, and we send that to A prime, F prime, B prime. How would I create an arrow that looks like this? Well, A and A prime are both in A, straight from the definition I just gave you. The first part of this triple is an object of the category A. So what I can do is between these two is create an arrow, H, from A to A prime. And then between B and B prime, I can have another arrow, K, because both B and B prime are in the category B. All right, now how do I take into play these arrows, F and F prime? So let's go ahead and draw out these diagrams I talked about before. So we'd have F of A via F to G of B, right? That's this triple. And then for this triple, we'd have F of A prime via F prime to G of B prime. Now, how can I compare these two? Well, you can see we have an F of A and an F of A prime. Right here, we have a morphism from A to A prime. So right here, I can just do F applied to H. H is between the inputs. I apply the same functor. I can create that arrow. And then between B and B prime, I have K. So between G of B and G of B prime, I can do G of K. And so here's a diagram that takes into account these arrows. And so because we want these arrows to be well formed, this should be a commutative diagram. So this diagram commutes. So in finale, what the arrows are, they're pairs, H and K, right? H is from our morphisms on the first coordinates and K is a morphism on the third coordinates. All right, now how do I define composition on these arrows? Well, it's pretty easy. If I have H, K, and I want to compose that with H prime, K prime, what I could do is just compose it part-wise or point-wise. So H composed H prime and K composed K prime. Because remember, 
H and H prime are both arrows in the same category, and K and K prime are both arrows in the same category. All right, now we've created all of these structures that can help us analyze the relation between these two functors and their outputs, but we haven't even given this category a name. Well, let's call it F down arrow G. So F is the first functor, G is the second functor. So this is how we describe it. The objects are these triples, the arrows are these doubles, and they have pointwise composition. Now, when I said analyzing the outputs of these two functors, that should remind you of natural transformations, because that's how I described them before. And at the beginning of this video, I said that these sort of generalize natural transformations in a way. So let's start off with these functors, which are on the same category. So domain and codomain the same. All right. A natural transformation between them would be uh, written like this, and we can create a diagram. So the diagram, if I have an arrow, f from a to b, well, I could do from f of a to f of b, what I could do is f of f. And then similarly, from g of a to g of b, I could do g of f. All right, now from f of a to g of a, what could I do? Well, from the definition of a natural transformation, it's tau a, and then from f of b to g of b, it's tau b. Compare this diagram with this diagram. It looks extremely similar. So if I were to have gotten rid of a prime and b prime for them to just be the same object and gotten rid of h and k for them both to just be f, you can clearly see that these are almost the same exact diagram, where f is tau a and f prime is tau b. So a way of describing natural transformations is I take in an element from the domain category and I'll output an element of the comma category. So let's discuss this fully. So we'll send an object A to a triple. What should the triple be? Well, the only object I have really is A. So those two objects should both be A. Because remember, their domain category is the same. So what should F be then in this triple? Let's go ahead and write out what it is. So it's from F of A via F to G of A, straight from this definition. Ah, if you remember the definition of a natural transformation, you know, tau a could fit right in there. So let's make that f tau a. And that's the output of this functor applied to an object. What about applied to an arrow? So I have an arrow a to b. What should I send this to? Well, remember what I did here. I replaced H and K, which are two different arrows, with F and F. So I just replaced them both to be the same morphism. So really, I should send this to F comma F. Well, let's go ahead and draw out the diagram that arises from this. Let me go ahead and write out what the original said. So this is the original. All right, what would the diagram look like? So the first pair is going to be on A, which is this one. So that's F of A via tau a to g of a. That's the diagram created by this, the output of a. And then the output of b would be the diagram f of b via tau b to g of b. Then, if I go f of a to f of b, remember the first coordinate is f, so it's f of f. And then, Second coordinate is also f, so right here I'd have g of f. And then look at that. The diagram I constructed from this functor is the same as the diagram for a natural transformation. And because this is a natural transformation, this diagram must commute. And so this is a valid 
functor. And so really what a natural transformation is, is it's a functor on a comma category with a lot of identities in there. So it sends a lot of objects and arrows to themselves. But this is an interesting concept that shows the relation between comma categories and natural transformations. All right, so the next idea I'm going to discuss with comma categories is the idea of projections. In these triples, what we can do is project them onto each of their coordinates. So we have the comma category, f down arrow g. I'll have a projection p and q. One will send it down to A, this one, and one will send it down to B, this one. And the way we'll define it is that P applied to a triple AFB will obviously output an object of A, and in this triple, the object of A is the first coordinate, so A, little a. Now if I do this applied to two arrows, H, K, Right here is an arrow of the comma category. I'll output H. Now the reason why I do that is because H is an arrow in A. And so that's the perfect way to project it. And then with Q, I do the opposite. So if I have A, F, B, I'd output B. And then Q of, say, H, K, I'd output K. Now there is actually a third different projection, which I'll call R, and it'll send it to the arrows of C. All right, what does that really mean? It'll send it to the third component. So I have A, F, B. It'll send it to F. So it'll output an arrow on C. Now a weird thing is, is my notation for the arrows of C. Why did I write it as C with a little arrow on top? Well, this is actually going to be the functor category between the two category and C. So it'll send this diagram into C, somewhere into C. And that makes perfect sense. Right here, it'll send the first object to the domain, it'll send the second object to the codomain, and it'll send the arrow to the arrow between them. This generates the arrows of C. Let's call this first object one, second object two, and let's call the arrow between them, let's just call it little f. Let's call the functor big F. So the objects are these functors, and for each of these functors, the functor will output a single object in C, another object in C, and an arrow between them in C. And there's really no restrictions on this because there's no composition. And so what you can see is that each of these functors uniquely identifies a domain, a codomain, and an arrow. And so really, this functor category is the arrows on C in that way. So now, the arrows of this functor category are the natural transformations between them. So let's say we have a different functor, g of 1, via g of, say, uh, of g of f, into g of 2. And these are the only things we have to worry about. There's no a's, there's no b's, these are the only two elements of the category. So, we just have to find two arrows between them like this that makes this diagram commute. And so the determining, uh, determining these two arrows is the same as determining a natural transformation. This diagram commutes, given some arrows say H and K, that will determine a natural transformation. So really the arrows of this functor category is just going to be a pair H, K. Oh, well isn't that nice? Then we can clearly tell that R of a pair H, K an arrow of the comma category will just return that same pair. Except that that doesn't really work. Because remember, f of 1, g of 1, is that all of these are in the same exact realm. All of these are in the same category. So what we actually have to do is do f applied to h and g 
applied to K. What this does is it moves both of these arrows into the normal category. And then once I have this, this pair will obviously satisfy this diagram, make it commutative, and it makes the arrows work. That's how we'll do this third projection. So now with these arrows, what I can do, so with the arrows of the category, I can project them down to the normal category, to their domains and codomain. And then from A to C, guess what I can do? I can do F. And then from B to C, guess what I can do? I can do G. And I get this crazy diagram. I get this diagram that's completely connected. And what you can prove is that this commutes. So let's, let's analyze this. So I need to have it that P and then F, so I need to have that F composed P is equal to R and then the next projection. So the projection and then R. And this projection will send it to the domain. So, and that will be domain. So domain uh, composed R. And then this one, if we do G composed Q, that has to be the same as doing the codomain composed R to make this diagram commutative. Let's go ahead and analyze this. So let's do F of P applied to an object. So say A, F, B. So this is going to be equal to F of A. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens with this one. Let's do the domain of R applied to A, F, B. Well, this is going to be equal to, well, R will send it to F. The domain of F, by definition, if we look back here, is in fact F of A. And so that checks out. All right, I'm going to leave it to you to verify the rest of it, but you can see that these really do seem like they are commutative. So now that we have these projections, what you can prove as well with this is that this diagram will uniquely determine a comma category. So if I have x and I bring it down via like r prime, bring it down via p prime, bring it down via q prime, and I'm saying prime because I'm going to reference more about this later. All right, so project that down to C, bring that up to C, bring that down to C, bring it up to C like that. Now, let's say this is the functor F and this is the functor G right there. What you can prove is that there is a unique functor uh, L, which takes you from X into the comma category F down G. And so in having a diagram like this commute, you can create a transformation that takes you into the comma category. So this projection diagram is unique in this sort of way. So some specific examples of comma categories are a, an object, down arrow, a functor, f. This would just be the constant functor. And so this will create, instead of diagrams like you saw, you'd have A, and it goes down to, say, F of B and F of C, and it'll go across with an arrow. All right, and a specific example of this is called a slice category. You do A down arrow, the identity functor on C. So you'd have A goes down to, well, let's go ahead and say B and C, and it goes across via F. So this is just these triangles without the functor between them. And the way you usually write slice categories is C slash A. And then there's also co-slice categories, which are like the identity functor down arrow a, which would be written as a slash c. And then with these ones, there would also be f down arrow a, and etc. And so these specific examples 
of comma categories are used as well. It's just comma categories are the most general and the most used out of all of these. And that's it.